First, I would like to extend my sincere gratitude to the government of Qatar and the Education Above All Foundation for their unwavering dedication to the universal right of education. I am delighted to participate in this dialogue to identify opportunities for policy reforms that can help enhance financing for education in low and lower middle income countries. We all agree that education stands as the cornerstone of human capital development, as was just emphasized by my brother, Minister Chimchek, which drives productivity, innovation, poverty reduction, and social mobility. However, despite strides in expanding access to education, Traditional systems in many nations, especially in low-income and fragile countries, fail to equip youth with the skills demanded by the evolving labor markets. This shortfall can be attributed in part to the global community's insufficient funding for education in low- and lower-middle-income countries. According to World Bank estimates, an annual investment of 39 billion US dollars is needed to meet the education-related SDGs targets. In our increasingly turbulent world, beset by natural disasters, calamities, and a myriad of man-made crises, education finds itself both as a casualty and a catalyst for addressing these pressing issues. However, overcoming these persistent challenges demands increased investment in education, a priority that many developing countries struggle to uphold amidst reduced fiscal space and escalating debt burdens. The obstacles facing education systems in developing countries are intricate and multifaceted demanding a collaborative approach and the full engagement of governments, multilateral development banks, and private institutions to enact substantive reforms. Specifically, multilateral development banks play a crucial role in supplementing the necessary financing and providing expert knowledge to drive education, educational transformation, while also fo fostering partnerships among government, civil society, and the private sector. Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, as a South-South multilateral development bank with 57 member countries, the Islamic Development Bank is strongly committed to staying pertinent and responsive to the needs and aspirations of millions of children who crave quality education that equips them with the essential skills and competencies vital for their future and the future of their countries. Through over 5.8 billion US dollars in loans and grants, the Islamic Development Bank has spearheaded numerous initiatives to enhance the education sector, prioritizing context-specific context financing aligned with national priorities. Central to the Islamic Development Bank's education policy is a shift from schooling and learning by rote to learning through critical thinking and dialogical education with some help from leveraging digital technology to transcend traditional classroom boundaries and foster creativity and self-learning. Moreover, the Islamic Development Bank scholarship program has empowered thousands of students and scholars, enhancing human capital across member countries and Muslim communities globally. In this regard, I am proud to announce that to date, we have offered scholarships to more than 19,000 students and scholars from 56 member countries and, and, 66 Muslim communities around the world outside the membership. 
Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, in closing, I urge experts to offer tangible, actionable solutions that development partners and decision makers in affected, in affected countries can implement to catalyze meaningful reforms in education systems. It is imperative that we move beyond rhetoric and take decisive action. Once again, I extend my gratitude to the Education Above All Foundation for convening this crucial discussion, and I thank you all very much. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.